Hello and welcome to the next Draw Along with Dan. I'm Dan Leith, the cartoonist and illustrator. The screen might look a little different right now because I'm trying something again that I've tried in the past every so often, and that's with a camera above the drawing board. And I am not at home in Kentucky. I'm actually in Michigan at a Bible camp, and I'm, I'm the speaker for the week. Actually, I spoke all last week, and I'll speak all this week too. So I'm doing these uh, drawing instruction videos remotely this time, and I want to try something a little different. I've always wanted to do some of these over-the-top camera, over-the-top of the drawing board things. So, And I've made tries in the past, but they're not so successful, so we'll see how these go. But I thought I would... Um, take a stab at trying to draw uh, some cartoon characters from the Christian world. And uh, so Wit from Adventures in Odyssey is my goal for today. So, uh, and again, I'm going to try to draw my version of this. So we'll see how it goes. The older Wit um, was a little more weighty. They've skinnied him up in recent days, and I like the older, more uh, plumper, uh, wit. So that's the one I'm going with. And um, so let's see how we go. So I want to draw a head that looks kind of like a pear. Um, let me make sure I get these lines dark enough so you guys can see them. Here you might think I'm drawing something from Veggie Tales, but I'm not. All right, so his head is kind of a shape like that. And then he's got this hair that kind of comes down like that. It's really long. Things like that. Okay, so that's pretty good for his hair. Got these ears that stick out, little little ears. And then um, let's see, his eyes would be like right somewhere in here. Again, we're just doing the rough sketch right now, getting the ballpark, and then we'll eyebrows. He's got these nice big puffy white eyebrows. Or he had anyway, before they I guess he still has part of his character and then the uh, the nose and usually you see him from a little more of a side shot and this is sort of a straight on shot but we'll turn his nose off to the side a little bit and it's usually kind of a longer nose and Rectangle, but bigger at the end. And then we'll make his the nostril thingy there. He's smiling. Put these things under his eyes. And then he's got this big mustache. Big grandfatherly like mustache. I was practicing this and I was giving him kind of a mustache that had the, the, the handlebar turned up at the end and it really didn't look too good so I don't know if I was trying to alter it a little bit but there's the do the inside of the mouth Got the mouth that comes down. Smiling cheeks. And then his face actually goes farther down than that. He's got more of a chin. And then his chin kind of tucks into his neck. And like he's got a turtleneck sweater on or something. I'm kind of drawing off the camera there, but. And 
see. And then he's got his shirt that kind of comes out and hides some of his lower face. So something like that. Well. Maybe not that high up. Work it out in the sketch phase, and then when you ink it, then hopefully you're fairly close. So I was trying this last night and it was just failing, so I'm recording it again this morning, or well, this afternoon. This obviously is not a live broadcast. And some of the reference that I've seen, they kind of, they put some eyelids on them. head that kind of shows through there. Just a little side story here as I'm sketching. You know, I used to work at the Creation Museum here in Kentucky. Well, not here. I'm in Michigan right now, but when I'm in Kentucky, I live by the Creation Museum. and um, They, uh, used to have a planetarium show that was narrated. The voice that they used to narrate it was uh, Paul Herlinger, who was the f was the second voice that actor that did Wit. And uh, so you'd go in there, and it was kind of sounded like Wit was giving you a tour of the the universe. So there's uh there's my Wit now. I've got that close enough, I guess, so we'll try to ink this in. Let's see how it turns out. Again, on the road makes it a little difficult to do regular things. I don't have my art studio tools with me. I have other things that I try to do artwork with, and my main drawing instrument that I record and do most of my artwork on is my Wacom Cintiq. And it's it's just a monster of a. It's a screen that you can draw on. And so it makes it really handy when I'm doing, all of my art, for the most part. And uh, I obviously obviously can't take that with me. So. I have other things I'm trying to get by with. But, and this is just another side note, there's a company that um, is relatively new that makes the same type of graphics tablet that uh, Wacom makes. In fact, a lot of the employees are former Wacom employees, Wacom Wacom. And uh, I have a friend that works for the, or well, used to work for Wacom, now he works for the other company. And he's been telling me about these products. In fact, he, uh, I have one to try. I'm trying it out, and I'm going to give some reviews on it. So I may be jumping ship, and, and uh, my favorite graphics tools of choice will be from this other company. And now you want to know what the name of the company is, right? <laughs> so it's called Sense Labs. So think of the word sense. Uh, yeah, does that make sense? But then instead of an S in the beginning of it, use an X. So that's how they spell their company name. It's kind of odd, but... Sense Labs, all in one gob of letters. 
and they make some excellent tools excellent digital art tools and uh, I'm very excited about that company so so for now I am trying to perfect the over the head shot over the drawing board shot with my cameras and such you should see the the setup that I have here it's quite inventive and entertaining so I'm just inking I've got a, a Tombow uh, brush marker I don't know if you can see that but Tombow T-O-M-B-O is what I'm using to ink this with. I love brush markers and not all of them are made well, but um, there are a few out on the market that that uh, are very usable and and nice and pleasant to uh, to use. They'll, they operate well. I like the thick and thin lines you can get from them some little lines up there for and then he should have some little crow's feet he's not a young pup anymore oh one fun story about adventures in odyssey is that uh and you know with with any feature like that you're not going to always get theology that you uh you totally agree with but my family and i have enjoyed that particular radio feature for a long time we listened to them on family trips and and stuff well recently my daughter um chose to get baptized and so she asked me if I would baptize her. And I was honored that she would ask me to do that. So I baptized her at our church. And it was a, a great, great uh, experience in time. Before she got baptized, she gave her testimony. And um, she gave it live, and she spoke very well. And she said that we were on a family trip, and I think she was a, it was a family trip, and we were playing Adventures in Odyssey, and and uh, there was an episode where one of the main characters, Connie, gets saved, and it was that it was that episode that. Um, that convicted my daughter of her need for Christ and that she's a sinner and that uh, she needed to receive Christ's free gift of salvation. And so she did that. And I'd, I'd heard her talk about being saved before. You know, I knew she was a Christian and I had just never heard that that was a component of it. And so my appreciation for Adventures in Odyssey uh, grew <laughs> quite a bit, understandably. So thank you for those that participated in that. I think it's still going, actually, but um, we don't have occasion to listen to it much now. Although I did buy some uh, episodes on CD from a garage sale not too long ago, so... Hey, I'm uh, I'm a kid at heart still, and they're fun to listen to, and so well done. So, I'm sure I'll listen to them, even though I don't. Ha we don't have a daughter that lives at home anymore. She got married, but there's nothing that says that you can't listen to them. 
when you're not a kid anymore. All right. And I know you've heard me talk about using brush pens and brushes and stuff in the past. But for those that haven't, um, just know that it takes a little bit of time to get used to them. But the thick and thin line that you can get from them when you know what you're doing is so nice. I love them. And uh, I have a video that's in my collection of videos on YouTube here about a Pentel pocket brush. And that's a, a brush pen that I love to use. And I have some with me on this trip, but I chose to uh, give this one a shot. And it's not, too, it's not too bad. And just quickly, the, uh, the trick to using a brush pen correctly is that you want to drag the brush. You don't want to, you don't push it. So it starts doing all kinds of wacky things. But uh, again, more pressure, the thicker the line, so. And then we'll go up to the eyes. Eyes can be tricky because you got to get them about the same size. We're drawing the pupils, leave that little reflection of light. There we go. And then something I kind of like to do too is to. All right, I'll put a little more feel for the hair and the eyebrows. I think that's about it. Now let's um, put a little like, extra touch of whiskers in the, in the mustache. There, that's good. And then we finish by signing our name. I'll put that down here. Dan, Letha, dot com, and please come, go to my website and check that out, and uh, you'll find lots of links to different art that I've worked on in the past, but um, here he is, Wit. My version of Wit from Adventures in Odyssey. Thank you to the Odyssey Adventures in Odyssey group at Focus on the Family. You uh, contributed to my daughter's salvation, and I appreciate it. All right, join me next time for another Draw Along with Dan. Thanks for watching.